You're so cute. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. Oh my god, you're pooping. Oh, he's pooping. Why are you pooping? <laughs> On me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> hey guys, what up? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna introduce Ernie to you guys. If you watched my last video, then you heard him. That's the bird that I, I was talking to. I was talking to a bird. Yeah, I do that sometimes. So yeah, that's the bird you heard in that video. Ernie, I'm going, honey. Yes, I'll be right there. I know. <laughs> Actually, some of you guys caught on and were like, who is Ernie? Good eye, good ear. <laughs> yeah, this is the Ernie story. Okay, so I was in the kitchen making myself some lunch. Out of nowhere, I heard just like a outside. So something crashed into the kitchen window. I kind of saw something out of the corner of my eye, like a black shadow hit the window. So I went outside and I found a bird on the floor. These are just the kind of things that happen to me apparently. Pretty normal day in my life, hey? <laughs> so at first I actually thought it was dead, you know, because that was a pretty big hit. It was on the floor and then I, I go near it, pick it up and what do you know, it's alive. So I brought him inside and placed him in this uh, like plastic crate thing, hoping that he would recover and then I just like let him go. So that was the plant originally. I thought he was gonna die, honestly, cause he was just kind of on his side. Every now and then I'd peek in the crate to see if he was like breathing and stuff. So um, I took him to, do you mind? How rude. I don't care. I so that was on a Sunday. Uh, you know, I couldn't necessarily rush him to any vet because no vets are available here on Sundays, unfortunately, which I hate Sundays for that reason. And I always need them on Sundays, so that sucks. I took him later that day into a room, just me and the bird, so he could feel like safe and stuff. Um, and I opened up the crate to see if he could fly and get up and stuff, and he couldn't. He was partially paralyzed. So the next morning, I had an appointment for Jacinto to get him neutered because I plan on getting him a mate so that he can bond with another bunny because bunnies are social animals and they need to live with other bunnies and it's just easier for a male and a female to bond than a male and a male. So, you know, I got him neutered so that you know, he could bond with a female but not reproduce, if that makes any sense. And you know, this video is not about bunnies, this video is about Ernie. Okay, so I had an appointment that morning, that next morning. So um, I decided that if Ernie made it through the night, that I would take him as well. So the next morning arrived and I checked up on Ernie and he was alive. Yay! So the vet checked him out and there was no broken bones, no dislocated joints, his wings were perfectly fine. Everything was physically okay with him. There was no physical reason why he couldn't get up. So the vet told me that his problem was a central nervous system problem, just like Odette. So um, this is Babette, I have another duck. Her name's Odette, and she actually has central nervous system problems too. When I rescued her, she couldn't get up either. She was also partially paralyzed. Actually, central nervous system problems are quite common in wild birds. This is now the second bird that I have found with this issue within the last few months. So it's very common in wild birds. However, the reason why we might not see it as much is because they get killed by predators or die of hunger or dehydration or they could get hit by a car. For the most part, something usually kills them before anyone 
finds them and can get them help. The central nervous system controls most functions of the body and mind. It consists of two parts, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is the center of our thoughts, the origin of body movements, the computer as most call it. So then the spinal cord could be considered kind of like a highway for communication between the body and the brain. So that's how this works. And if the spinal cord is injured, the exchange of information between the two gets disrupted. The cause of this could be physical, you know, like being in a car wreck and being paralyzed afterwards, viral, there's some viral infections that attacks your central nervous system, genetics, it could be chronic. A lot of things could have caused this bird to become paralyzed. However, physical injury was not one of those things, despite uh, slamming against my kitchen window. He did kind of crack his beak a little bit. Uh, you can see it right here. That's pretty much where the impact happened. So he was healthy, you know, apart from the beak. So there was hope for him regaining movement by just giving him good care, keeping him in a good environment, and just having him on a good diet. The vet just told me to work my magic on him, so that's what we agreed I'd do. Other than that, he was just put on anti-inflammatory medication. So it was two shots every day. I'd take him in the morning to the vet for the first shot, and then the second one was at around 6, seven in the afternoon and that went on for a few days so i didn't get any footage of that because uh my vet is kind of uncomfortable when i film in there especially when she's working on my animals because she knows i'm a youtuber and like you know like i get it so um i don't film there anymore <laughs> uh yeah i left i went home jacinto stayed there because they were gonna do surgery on him and yeah back at home i just decided to try and figure out what he was gonna readily accept from me as far as like food goes so these guys are pretty common around here i see tons of them every day unfortunately they are very used to junk So since this guy is like wild from around here, I figured he was used to some not so good stuff. So we tried mealworms. Those were a hit, super worms too. He likes worms. a seed mix since uh, people do hang like bird feeders and stuff with this seed mix in it so I figured maybe he was familiar with it and would eat it but no <laughs> that was a no dog food so I see these guys out in the food bowls that I have outside for the strays. I've seen them eat kibble from the plates out there. So um, I tried the dog food and yeah, look. So yeah, so far this is what he was eating here so later that night i went back and you know he got his second shot and then i went to go pick up jacinto yeah here he is with his cone of shame <laughs> he looks so cute with it so i made a little hammock thing for ernie to rest on so he wouldn't just be on the floor of the cage 24 7 because i noticed that when i would leave him on the floor like that uh he would poop and then lay on it that's nasty okay no ernie and also i didn't want him developing sores on the sides of his body from laying on his side too much so i had him here in this little crate box thing temporarily but once i saw that he was going to be under my care for a while i decided to go ahead and buy him this and that's 
where he was staying now. So it's important that the cage is small so that he doesn't move around too much and injures himself. Also because he needs to be resting, not moving around. So I noticed he would get tired of being on the hammock all day and night. So I decided to just let him be and leave him to lay on his side if he wanted to. Which he seemed to enjoy and be more relaxed. So yeah, you know, whatever made him more comfortable. That's what I was doing. Okay, so eight days after I first found him, this is when he first started trying to stand up. now to 19 whole days since the day that I found him. He's standing! So I placed the branch in there. Well, it's actually two branches like held together by a rubber band because you know I couldn't find one branch wide enough for like his feet to fit. So yeah, it's two branches. Oh my goodness, hi, you wanna come out? So I placed that in there so that he would try and step up on it and you know get those leg muscles going. So this was like a rehab therapy for his legs. And you guys, like he tried really hard to get up there that first day but you know he just couldn't. He wasn't there yet but you know it's okay. He'll get it, right? He'll get it, yeah. Oh my god, you're pooping. Oh, he's pooping. Why are you pooping? <laughs> oh my god. Why? Ah. You're lucky you're cute. And you're so poopy. Ugh. I'll be back, you guys. And we're back. So two days later, I came home and found him like this. Yes, he was asleep on top of the branches. I was so proud of him. So this meant that he finally was able to get up there and he was exhausted by the end of it. And it's just hilarious to me that that exact position is the same position that my ducks sleep in. Head twisted backwards, beak between the wings, like it's like he's a duck. So here he is the next day up there on his branches looking all proud. Coyote! Get it Ernie, get it. Get it Ernie, get it. So everything was going amazing. He was progressing, things were going super smoothly. About a week later, he was just about 100% back. I was even considering maybe letting him go again, you know, if after talking to the vet and her agreeing that that was the best thing. So here's the dilemma. Usually when I take in like wild birds like that, I don't get attached to them. I don't spend a lot of time with them. I try not to bond to them or bond them to me. You know, I keep contact very limited and, um, you know, just let them be basically while they heal and eat and stay here. The thing with him is uh, we weren't sure right away if he was going to be a release candidate because we didn't really know what caused the paralysis to begin with. So nothing guarantees that it's not going to come back again in the future or that something triggered it in the wild that is not doing it anymore because he's in captivity now but what if we release him and whatever that thing was happens to him again you know like very unlikely of him to get lucky again a second time if it was to happen to him again to where like another human is gonna find him and help him and you know so we weren't sure if uh releasing him was the best option but just in case i did keep contact with him very limited you know i didn't want him getting used to me so two days after i was considering releasing him because you know he was just so healthy this happened he freaking broke his beak so it happened at night so i was changing out his sheets 
diaper thing from the bottom of the cage usually when I take him out I would wrap him in an old t-shirt because you know he was a wild bird he's aggressive he pecks he's not nice <laughs> Stop it. Ow. So I would usually wrap him up in a towel, then clean his cage out, and then just put him back in there. So this time, like, he pecked the t-shirt that I had him wrapped in. He pecked it a few times, and that was it. I look over at him, and a piece of the bottom of his beak is just like hanging down. And of course, I freak out. Like, oh my god, Ernie, what did you do to yourself? Does that not hurt? So this happened at around 3 a.m. Unfortunately, I had to wait till the next morning to get him to the vet so meanwhile I just kind of watched him um, at first the piece was just hanging and eventually it uh, completely detached he bled a little bit and then there was also blood on the piece itself and I kept it so that I could you know take it to the vet <laughs> and then the rest of the night I just kind of very carefully observed his behavior <laughs> when he cleans himself <laughs> it's so cute and you know the weirdest part was that he was like nothing he was eating and drinking like nothing like he wasn't in any kind of pain he was going on about his night like nothing so in the morning as soon as the vet opened up I called I got him an appointment early in the morning and I rushed him over so the vet said that there is really no other explanation to why his beak broke off so easily other than the fact that it was a little bit shattered already from that first hit that he took it was damaged already it really didn't take much for it to fully break off in the end we agreed that we were gonna try and well sh not me she was gonna try and glue it back on so it was a good thing that I kept and took her the little piece the thing is that um, the next few days I was gonna be out of town so I ended up leaving him there at the vets and my paralyzed disabled kitty and another rescue that I haven't told you guys about yet um, so all three of them I decided to leave there like boarding so because they're like the most complicated of my animals right now and uh, the people that stay here when I'm out of town uh, I feel like it's too much work for them so I leave them there at the vets and they watch them for me and take excellent care of them for me while I'm gone so that's what we did and while I was out of town and that he was gonna be staying there she was gonna go ahead and do the procedure so you know I signed the paperwork and everything and left which I felt horrible for but um, you know I know that they take excellent care of them so <laughs> so what she said she was gonna do was uh, use like the same stuff that they use to glue turtle shells back together after they've been like ran over and stuff I think it's like resin or something I'm not really sure but she used that to glue the piece of beak that broke off to the original beak you know after letting it heal a little bit so I was out of town when the procedure happened but she sent me this picture and you know there he is looking all handsome again with his beak all together <laughs> so yeah we get the beak glued back on and then I come back home after my trip I go to the vets pick up my babies so when I picked them up the vet clarified that most likely the beak was gonna eventually fall off if he wasn't gentle with it so thankfully he can drink and eat just fine without it so no reason to risk putting him through anesthesia again and you know all that stress if eventually it's just gonna keep happening so we agreed that if and when it falls back out that we were gonna leave it alone so I take him home and he was pretty much himself you know like nothing happened and you know he did great with the beak glued back on for like a month and then it fell off yeah so I was doing some research about birds and beaks broken beaks and prosthetics and you know what can be done and I found this case about an eagle named Brian so unfortunately Brian was shot in the face by poachers his upper mandible was missing a huge chunk due to this over the course of about eight years he received about 10 different prosthetics 
Unfortunately, none of them really worked out long term because his beak was always changing or they caused infections or just other problems. In the end, his caregivers decided to stop with the prosthetics and instead they would just cut up his food really small for him to eat. So he had issues with the wound left over from the prosthetics, you know, in order to attach a prosthetic, they have to use screws and like wire and you know, it's very invasive. Oftentimes you're creating new wounds on top of an already existing wound and it's invasive. For over a year, his care workers worked on his infected wound from the prosthetics. A year fighting off infection. Unfortunately, he was not getting better. His quality of life wasn't good and also he was an older bird so the heartbreaking decision to euthanize him was made. So the biggest issue they said was moisture buildup under the prosthetic. Between the wound and the prosthetic, moisture would build up and then that would cause problems. So that is why I will not be looking into getting a prosthetic made for Ernie for his bottom beak. And that's also why we will not be attempting to re-glue the piece that broke off. You know, he can eat fine and drink fine without it so really it would be purely aesthetic in Ernie's case. Now I understand some birds absolutely need prosthetics to live. Not the case for Ernie. So yeah he's just gonna be this awkward looking bird now with an uneven beak but you know that's fine. So now with this beak situation. He is 100% not a candidate to be released back into the wild. The wild here in the city. <laughs> he needs his beak to hunt, to find food, to pick up food. The reason why he can eat here is because I put his food in a really deep bowl so that he can dip his entire beak in there and get a hold of it. Same thing with water. He needs really deep bowls. How is he gonna get really deep bowls filled all the way up to the top with food and water in the wild? He can't. So he's gonna be staying here now. But other than that, you know, apart from everything, he's healthy and thriving. So the reason why I didn't film with him is because he is not tame. Now that he's gonna be staying here, I'm gonna have to start working with him, try and tame him down a little, try and just, you know, get him to calm down. But Bet knows what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's that. That's gonna be fun. Yay, not really. So, the moral of this video, because I like including morals in videos now, don't dwell on the bad things in life. Instead, focus on how good your life is and how lucky you are to be living it you know just like ernie ernie didn't care at all that his beak broke off you know he continued on like nothing so be like ernie in life that's it that's all i have to say about this so we have reached the end of this video thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and if you're not yet subscribed to this channel then what is wrong with you do it I'm waiting. Also, don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. Drop a beautiful comment down below and that's it. Have a good day or a good night and I love you guys. Bye. So, I want to show you guys really quick the mantises. You know, let you guys know how big they've gotten. They're humongous. I'm only gonna pull out one. Because, like I said, they all look the same. Hello. Look at you, hun. You're so big. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess you're going to get on this finger then. That's cool. That's cool. You could do whatever your little heart desires. So, yeah, here's one of them. You're like the size of an ant when I met you. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think he likes the bright light, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them back. But this is how big they are. <laughs>